Happy Monday, everybody. I hope that you have been having a great time with whatever is going on in your life, in your society, in your community, within your family. Uh, bonsoir, mwiriwe kiyora, good evening, magadini, akwaba, ekade. Ekade. There we go. That is the new greeting from... <laughs> Sudan. Yeah, Sudan. It's Dinka. Yes. Yeah. Oh, there we go. And also, you've got another another way of greeting each other in, in Sudan, isn't it? Yeah, so it's surprisingly, Arabic is the most spoken language in Sudan, south and north. And it's Salam. Salam. Yeah. Because, you know, um, uh, even like we've got um, um, 20% of the Burundian population that speak, um, um, that is Muslim. Yeah. You know, and I feel like I'm familiar with that kind of greeting. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to the African Mirror. Tonight, we have a special guest in the studio. She's my friend. <laughs> you know, would you actually give us the honor of telling us who you are? Yes. Uh, are you a philosopher? A philosopher. Uh, <laughs> or why I are you such a super cute face? <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, so my name is Karima Madzut and I just want to say thank you for having me here. Oh, it's a like pleasure Like you guys have been so lovely the whole time I've been here, so I'm, I'm oh, pleased to be here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a musician and an actress and yeah, I dabble in other things, but those are my main, I guess, like hearts pulling so Karima is an artist and an actress. On the side, you also do some uh, uh, events organizing? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Tell us more about that one. I actually haven't done anything in a while because of this whole COVID business. It's just, you know, <laughs> COVID so, many things that, yeah, so many things have been <laughs> shut down. It's like, oh, do I want to take the risk? But um, no, I'm grateful to be back in New Zealand because, you know, more, more spaces are, are open and, um, you know, we're in a good position from the rest of the world. But yeah, it's I was doing um, live music events back in uh, Melbourne, mm -hmm. and it was basically to try, you know provide a platform for up and coming um, African artists, mm -hmm. you know, and having um, you know that promoted more in our community. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and what 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 being from coming from. Uh, an actress and uh, uh, a singer kind of like background, what made you uh, feel like you wanted to... To pursue uh, that. Yeah, to pursue that. Um, culture. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, definitely. You know, culture comes from Africa. And um, when I... <laughs> When I was, as, you know, as, from the younger stage, we would do law, which is as, um, it's like a dinka event. How do you say that again? LOL. 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 L-O-R. L-O-R. I can't, I can't speak to you properly, so I don't, <laughs> my, I don't, I'm not, I wouldn't. Yeah. And what is that about? So it's, you just, it's an event, mm -hmm. um, music, dancing, drumming. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I started there and uh, I was in church when I started singing. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was maybe, I don't know, four or five years old or something oh. like that. And just, wow. just, yeah, music is, I don't know, it just pulls you in. And it's part of you. Yeah. It's who you are. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's, that sounds pretty cool. So I know that uh, recently we met Asplo as yeah. well, which is one of the... Uh, biggest festival here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Mm. Um, and, you know, for one, I really want to um, appreciate the fact that uh, as being in this corner of the planet, mm. we still can um, have this moment where we can dance, you know, together, mm. where we can sing together, where we can enjoy it together in public, Celebrate. you know, when mm. we've got, you know, this challenge, you know, mm. uh, called COVID, yeah. where other people like uh, the rest of the world is kind of like, yeah, you know, like they have to quarantine themselves. They they're in lockdown like mm. for you know months on months. And and yeah. for me, when 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 I was at Splo, I could not stop like thinking how really blessed we are. So blessed, you know, like from even uh, my um uh, even management background mm. and my, my 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 DJing background to be able to be there and share um mm. this this beautiful thing that actually other people outside uh, certain countries don't have access to mm -hmm. how did that make you feel like you know because you were you you were asplo first of all let's go back you asplo what were you doing asplo oh just having the time of my damn life <laughs> 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 no asplo was amazing and honestly it's it's probably 
yeah, my favourite festival in New Zealand. But just, um, you know, I can see so much heart goes into it. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw John, the director, today and... Mm -hmm. You know, just to know the intention behind, uh, behind you know, why these people are putting it on and the huge consideration and forethought that they have mm -hmm. um, about, you know, keeping, keeping a safe environment, um, you know, providing, like, a, a positive space where, you know, even kids can be safe in. Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing. Yeah, and uh, you were performing as well? Yeah, I performed with We're Together. Okay, that's yeah. good. So because you have been performing like for the while now, like, you know, you've got you've been as Plo before mm. and Rhythm and Vines. Yeah, Rhythm and Vines, Subsonic, Homegrown and I, I I love all of them as well. Yeah, and Womad. Yeah, Womad. Yeah, Womad is also another like mm -hmm. a, you know, my, one of my other favorite like a yeah. festival here in New Zealand, you yeah. know. So like a big having that um that you know like uh, being an artist of your caliber who have like actually gone through different even only we're talking about uh, New Zealand right we're yeah. not talking about Australia we're talking about New Zealand um when you've got um this experience of being on stage mm. and entertaining people like um uh do you actually because I've had so many people asking me <coughs> you know about it, you know being like a DJ myself and having performed in front of other people they ask me do you get nervous when you actually are about to jump on stage um it's yeah it can be nerve-wracking but I think as soon as I get on stage or in front of a camera and I'm in the moment mm -hmm. then I'm fine mm -hmm. you know I just I just surrender to it but um yeah I think just because you can you can create the situation in your mind when you're performing yes yeah, yeah. and I think it's you know when you have um I don't know like yeah, I I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, cuz for me like when um when I'm about to go on stage like sometimes like even when I'm about to play I rather want to be on site like an hour before yeah. so that I can actually get the um the vibe and the environment of what's going on mm. uh uh in that particular like time and place. Yeah. And it's true when I jump uh, uh on 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 stage mm. or like where I'm like at a station in clubs and I play the first tune like the anxiety goes away but mm -hmm. all this time when I'm behind and I'm looking I'm kind of like inside I'm like oh my goodness yeah. are these people is this crowd gonna dig my tunes you know am I gonna be able to make them you know their money worth it yeah. but then when I start like dropping the first tune it's almost like it's I'm home you know yeah. I don't know like some other artists have said that they, they, they become you know something yeah. else like something else takes over them and I do understand because when yeah. I'm on stage and I start engaging with the audience um, it's 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 it takes over, you know, and, yeah. and 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 this is is a beautiful conversation that I'm I, I have you in the studio as an artist who've performed for the, a minute now, yeah. uh, to be able to talk about like when we talk about Splo and we talk about you being on main stage and other mm -hmm. female people being on main stage. What is there like for you to encourage other African people? I know that we still have to go back and and hear more about what you have done and mm. and especially from where you come from but what is um something that you can actually like uh, uh, give to the young young african um especially female or or, or africans but yeah. i'm just saying that because now we've got um, this this new energy coming in of like uh, let's empower like mm -hmm. uh, the young uh, girls that I, I, I want to follow their own passion you yeah. know you know like cuz um where we come from um uh, ladies and women are mostly seen um, in different positions. Mm. So you having done this, coming from Sudan all the way to here, been to Australia, yeah. tested different waters, come back here, now you are in the middle of doing new videos for your new music. What is something that you can tell that little girl that is going to be looking like, oh, that's Karima. Oh, man. I want to I wanna be like her. Um... I mean, even if it, I had to give advice to my younger self, you know, as a little black girl, it's 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 hard because it's you know it's like saying the odds are against us, and and you know you have to know that. Um, but you you know follow your heart, <laughs> mm -hmm. and yeah, always stay centered because. Life just in general, and we've seen with COVID, it's just you can't control anything. Mm -hmm. We don't have control. Um, and you can be pulled in so many different directions, but 
just follow your light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and it sounds so esoteric, but it's just, you know, it's the only way that I can really pull it. Pull yeah. It, follow yeah. your light. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, don't give up. So, like, uh, if we were to just, like, uh, give a little bit of a process of how you became who you are right now, mm. I know you've been sharing, like, with us, like, in private conversation, <laughs> how you are seeking the truth, you know, the true you, you know, who you are, you know, <laughs> on this planet, you know. So, yeah. like, like, you are a little bit a step ahead for that little black girl, even the younger you Definitely. right now. So if we're to go back, like, your journey from Sudan, yeah. you know, to New Zealand mm. and uh, to have played at all these festivals, yeah. how did you make that happen? What, was it luck? It's God, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> yes. Honestly, because, you know, I coming... F- and I don't like to talk about, you know, coming from a refugee background, but mm-hmm. I feel like in this in this you know instance, I think it's relevant. Um, but you're in limbo when yeah. you're a refugee. You don't have a home. You don't have a passport. And again, the odds are against you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not. You don't have the freedom of being a. Um, you don't go to a country as an immigrant. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's you. That's a decision that you made. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're a refugee, it's like you don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. You you can't go. You know, you can't it's, choose. You can you can choose. You know, there are you can choose if you want to go to Canada. You can choose if you want to go to New Zealand. But just the idea of home mm-hmm. and not having that mm-hmm. that foundation. Because mm-hmm. um, it's you know I feel like New Zealand is my home, yes. and then you know. Even over here, sometimes you can feel like, is it really? Like, if I, because I've experienced so much racism, as, as beautiful as this country is, like I have. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's another thing. That's another construct that's against you, mm-hmm. you know? Layers. Layers. There's so many layers. Um, but, you know, and all I can say, it is, you know, it's, it is God. Mm-hmm. And um, that's how I've overcome so many obstacles Mm -hmm. um, and just even not giving up, Mm -hmm. um, knowing that, you know, we all have a greater purpose, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, And, yeah, I don't, yeah. Like, what I'm mostly interested in is for you coming from Sudan and uh, you have this, because I know what it means to be a refugee, Mm. you know, like how... um, you come here and uh, for a certain amount of time, you are even trying to learn the language mm. for those who don't even learn the language. Yeah. You try to settle in. Yeah. You're relying on a people that you just met. Adjusting or like to a, a new culture. You know, you need to new culture and then, you know, and even your color is not playing for you mm-hmm. and all these things. I know it's too much, you know, to have, to have you know, on your shoulders. Mm. And this is why, for me, I'm interested in knowing the process of, like, so when you... I remember even if, you know, like drawing from the con- private conversation we've had, how you told me that it used to be in a, in a rock band. Yeah. Oh, you my know, God. Like, <laughs> how did that happen? How did you? Because oh, I also uh, know that you are here with your family. And yeah. I know, like, okay, Sudan is not like Burundi, but I do also know that the uh, African culture, the Ubuntu, everything, mm. parents are more protective of their children right. as well. In terms of, like, yeah. even though you are 20-something, you still cannot dress up like that if you're living in my house, mm. that kind of thing. So for you to have gone out from that to, yeah. like, in a rock band, well, how old were you? Oh, I was um, 15. There we go. Yeah. So how, like, like <laughs> how did that happen for you to be going from, like, a church? I would imagine your family was obviously, like, church-oriented. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, how did you break away from there to go into a rock band? And also, how did you become the Karima that you are, the singer that we've got right now? Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 how did you change from rock from that into, to, to into that? Just... Life. Did you have a friend that pulled you in into like a, being into this rock band? And- um, I think at the time it was, you know, culture has a huge influence on us, yes. obviously. And yes. mainstream culture is you're, you're being fed from so many different streams and, you know, that becomes your identity sometimes. But at the time, um, I think rock music was huge worldwide. Mm-hmm. You know, we yeah. had bands like Green Day, My Chemical Romance. Mm. Um, I remember Motorcade here in New Zealand. Um, she had, and I mean, they're still, um, they're still great and mm-hmm. they're still big, mm-hmm. um, but just on the mainstream, um, side and, you know, now it's, it's, um, what is it? 
trap. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Trap is a new kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. rock and roll. Yeah. So it changes. Mm. Um, and it evolves. Pardon? It evolves. It evolves, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And at that time, um, that's just, yeah, what was influencing me. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, it took me through a dark kind of um, period mm-hmm. because, you know, just, I guess, the culture of that kind of music at the time. And, it's, it's, and trap is kind of, I see it the same, you know, on a, if we're talking um, from the point of view of, <clears throat> you know, vibration and frequencies, it's yeah, not, right, they're not exactly uplifting music. And if you're already in, you know, an adolescent, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you're already yeah. a child, you're developing, yeah. you don't, um, it's easy to, you know, plant seeds in your mind. In your like, mind. You know? <laughs> yeah, because we were talking about how we need to be careful about what sound we listen to, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, because some of them just get you these anxieties yeah. or they get you to break down and hey, you don't even know. They've been used as weapons in war. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so <laughs> it's... Um, th- they're strong. They're palpable. It's it, they're not. It's it's not mythology. It's not mysticism. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's very real. <laughs> yeah. So you were there, and then you're experiencing all these things, and then you were like, oh, maybe this is not supposed to be like uh, the uh, genre that I want to go into. And then yeah. you know, you starting like a uh, build building up your own your own your own you your yeah. own character your yeah. own your own uh, charisma yeah i yeah. think as i grew older my mind just became open to to new genres and um not feeling like oh this you know because this is all i listen to this is what defines me because mm-hmm. you know so much of music has um an impact on your identity what you wear you know your slang your, your haircut your haircut <laughs> the people that you attract around you yes um so yeah, I think I just grew older and I just, you know, you, you become, you just become more open and receptive to different influences and um, trying to find what's, I don't know, what's what's resonating me with, in, in my soul, you know, what's not just a sound, but actually, you know, I feel it in here. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and I'm still, I'm still trying to find that. I mean, like I, you know, music is, it can impact you in, in different ways depending on what you listen to. Um, but sometimes I just want silence, to be honest, like just, you know, you know, and then come back Beyond and just holes. be like, okay, what is, what is pure? Mm-hmm. What is, what is the sound of purity? Because, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you think that in your current um, 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 creating process about the new music that you are about to put out, the EP you are working on, yeah. um, do you think like uh, uh, it has something to do with your roots back uh, from Sudan? Um, yeah, being um, creatively influenced by the people around me, that, that definitely has something to do with it. Um, and as far as content and the style of music, um, I'm not really sure mm-hmm. yet because with some of the beats, um, they're still kind of developing. Mm-hmm. Um, I've written all of the lyrics. I know the kind of story that I want to tell from beginning to end. Um, and, yeah, I'm happy with where it's at at the moment. But, yeah, I guess we'll see what it turns out into. So I'm just, I'm just, yeah. No, oh, that's good because, like, what is happening, um, a little bit of what is happening in Burundi as well is, mm. like, uh, um, new artists are kind of, like, going back and taking um, some, like, iconic uh, yeah. music from Burundi and then they will bring in this new beat yeah. and and just to keep it, like, alive and, and, and yeah. keep it going, you know. What do you think about that kind of, like, a new era uh, of artists? It's a breath of fresh air. Like? Sorry? It's a, it's a breath of fresh air. Right. It really is. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still finding African music myself. Um but, you know, to even to, you know, to know somebody like you and the kind of beats that you play when you're, you know, playing in front of, in front of a crowd. And that's that's something that's missing mm-hmm. um, because we, um, yeah, I guess we only know what's what's within our small circle. So you, it's, it's nice when new artists and people who are thinking on a different scope to come and introduce new ideas. Mm hmm. To us, or things that you know, it, it comes from our culture, but we yearn to to have it. We don't really know where to find it. Mm-hmm. So to have people like you with a platform that you have, 
you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's, it's, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about my splaw set? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Honestly. And I told the girls too, you guys killed it. It was so amazing. It was so amazing. We're just like trying to, you know, fish for some compliments. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was amazing about it? Do tell me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now she's really like, okay. I am, I am fishing for, I did say. I, I got I one fish, let me get the whole ocean. I, like, I confess. <laughs> <laughs> one time, or a quarter. Oh, man. Um, and I was telling John as well, like, um, the, the director, mm -hmm. just... So many compliments to the festival because it was the first time that I'd seen so many African acts, mm -hmm. you know? As many, yeah? As many. Yeah. And we need that. That is so true. We need it. We do. Like, they did an amazing job this year of giving a little bit of a voice on a different platforms for mm -hmm. uh, African music. And it was well perceived, you know? Definitely. Yeah, like, it, 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 it made sense um, for us to be there even yeah. as a... Or if I may say so myself, because obviously she's not telling me. Ah. <laughs> That it was so good because um, we had a group of uh, young girls and mm. we've been rehearsing for a long time because within our minds we just I admire the work that you all put into it. It was it was really good and yeah. I'm very thankful to like the whole team that was there, like yeah. the dedication into representing Africa. <laughs> I felt like for the first time in New Zealand mm. that was something that I felt like as a DJ and how much I've been working into this industry. That's something that we managed to actually deliver with a big big bang you know I was really like yes yeah. thank you for this year and then we also you know like a, a thing it's, it's it's a sad thing to say but because you know we um again privileged to be in Aotearoa New mm. Zealand where we can you know still have this moment to be together and enjoy and dance and forget about the stress mm. of COVID when other people are not, <clears throat> are not actually able to access such vibes yeah. that have allowed like uh, uh, some events you know like uh, organizers to focus on promoting local artists yeah. you know and that's how we ended up having all this variety of yeah. you know local artists performing as Plow, yeah. which actually is <clears throat> recommendable for them. It was, That's amazing. Can imagine how hard it was and, 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 and everything. But yeah, you're yeah. right. The, the, the number of acts that were from the African community was quite beautiful to yeah. see. It's unique. Um, it, was, it was actually And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't, um, you know, it, sh it should happen more. It should not end there, eh? Yeah. It should not end there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. As an event manager, you're like, shall we do something? Do we <laughs> shall we shall we do something about it? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're we're also we can empower ourselves to put on our own um, uh, platforms, like the you know, like what you've got here and the um, events that I've done, you know, and other you know, Maka doing her her events. Um, I'm glad that we can do that within the community as well to uplift each other mm -hmm. because, yeah, with some of these opportunities outside of our community, we really have to, you know, it's still... Encourage and motivate people to be part of it. Even these young African people that are like, yo, I can do it, but I do not know where to go. Yeah. It's actually quite amazing to see um, uh, African people representing Africa on that big mm -hmm. platform, you yeah. know, as, as, as big as, as, as Splore. Um, I do, I do want to uh, share a little bit about uh, where you actually do come from, which is Sudan. What would be the three, four things that will come to your head to say, if you go to Sudan, it's about this. Or if you want to visit Sudan, go here. Mm. Culture-wise, you know, no limit. Yeah. Oh, man. Beautiful boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely. Right? Beautiful boys, beautiful girls. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Beauty everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I wish I knew more about the, you know, our culture and our history. Sweet. You know, I wish so, I could give you like facts, like this is, you know, but all I can say is what I know, and I know that we're tall. <laughs> That's tall. one thing. <laughs> the, to the point that at one time we were, talking, we were talking, and then I was like, So, where are you from? And then she goes, I'm from Sudan. I'm like, Whoa, what happened to you? Why are you so short? <laughs> People 
people always people always want to remind me that Sudanese are tall. Yeah. And then they ask me if I'm Sudanese. So I just I just wanted to point that out. Where, <laughs> where were you when everybody was at the market? I don't know. I don't know. Sleeping. <laughs> Creating music. <laughs> Yeah. So okay, so the first thing that she knows about Sudan is like his tall people. Yeah. And then the darkest. <laughs> <laughs> and oh man. Um <laughs> So this is now we're like a, probably like, oh my god, I'm gonna go home and do a homework. Yeah, no, I, 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 I I'm yeah, I, I definitely need to do my homework. Um were I think were these are just opinions, you know. Yes. Um, I think yeah, a very spiritual people. Yes. We're very co- connected to land. Mm-hmm. Um, very rooted. Mm-hmm. Um, there are heaps of tribes, mm-hmm. Nilotic tribes in in Sudan. Mm-hmm. And what else? The before South and North became separate. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what was it? The northern part of Sudan and the lower part of Egypt formed the Nubian kingdom. Mm-hmm. You know? There we go. So it's, there's also a wealth of history uh, history that is um, unexplored. There. I believe that. I yeah. believe that or unexplored or suppressed. Suppressed, yeah. yeah. Suppressed, yeah. probably. Because, you know, even I, for me also, you know, it's a nautical fact, you know. I believe like uh, all these countries of Africa that are going through some um, endless wars mm. is because there's something there that is of interest yes, to of other course. countries. Yeah. But we obviously, you know, oblivious to it and we just kind of... I like, mean, we know. We've, we've got the minerals and the gold and the diamonds and the tungsten and the, you know. <laughs> we've, the, that's why all of these wars are happening, all yeah. your resources. Yeah. 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 So, but uh, um, it, 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 it's even more of a fact for us to be able to just, you know, uh, remembering and returning to mm-hmm. like how things are not just being corrupted or brainwashed yeah. with, you know, everything that we are told on TV mm-hmm. or, or um, these, you know, charitable organizations that are, you know, helping Africa <laughs> and all that kind of thing. So basically, um, um, so the tallest people, people in Africa and also the, the, the I think you guys have the dark, darkest skin. Yeah. You know, like I see all these pictures. The most about, melanated. Right. <laughs> I, don't know, I wonder how that happened. Oh. Like, I guess maybe Sudan like a birth to all other, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess it needs... Does it need proof? I I don't know, but the you know belief doesn't need proof. I I believe that. But also, is. like all of Sudanese are not really dark skinned, isn't it? No, and um, I would use my mum's side of the family as an example. Yeah, because I was so I I stayed in Kenya for seven years and then came here. Had never been to Sudan until eight years ago, and all I knew was you know the Dinka side of my family, which is the, um, you know, the notable features that people would, you know, think Sudanese tall, dark skin, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. Um, and then I went to Sudan for the first time and I'm just like, you know, it must it, there must be every kind of like gene sort of feature over yeah. here because yeah. on my mum's side of the family, light eyes, you know, light brown hair, um, some of them look like the West African... This is the tribe, yeah. you know, yeah. and even Dinkins, you know, we don't we don't all look the same as such a variety mm-hmm. of of features. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even like, just you know the the narrow nose and you know it being Eurocentric, you know, focused. It's Af- so many people in Africa have long hair, you know. Well, that's interesting. So. <laughs> It's like really interesting. That's There's a really lot of stereotypes now. that are just false. And you've got uh, Arabic. Um, yeah, Arabic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Arabic, Dinka, um, Nuer, so many different languages, so many different tribes. And this is why, you know, I wish I knew more because there's just so, so many layers. You can still. You can still learn. Yeah, I'm, d- yeah. I'm definitely going to go <laughs> and on a journey coming. and find and out. Coming. Yeah, about coach, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, no, thank you very much for giving us your time. Um, we will be putting on a um, oh, um, a tune uh, that, uh, oh. that you have, uh, you have uh, given us to share yeah. you know, to everybody else so that we can hear how beautiful your voice is. Oh, thank I you. I believe you're the next eat. That is that is that is why we probably might do another another interview when you just kind of fly. Oh hey, Carrie, mom, your friend. Yeah. Remember, <laughs> she started here on this couch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really would love. Like I see you as actually kind one one of like uh, the, the 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 young leaders, you know, in terms oh, wow. of like you know like uh, he, here in 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 Atorewa for the African community. You know, like uh, we yeah. want to wish you well. I know Thank if you, you know, with your acting, we didn't get to talk so much about your acting because yeah. you are such like a multi you know um, functional system <laughs> Uh, yes, thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. Thank you for um, having me. And thank you for giving us your ears out there. We will see you um, next time. 